Hi, I'm Erin. The high tunnel is up and plastic is on, but the work isn't done. In fact, it's finally time for me to go to work inside the high tunnel. But it might just be too late to have a tomato crop this year on Our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Typically, I plant tomatoes in the high tunnel sometime between April 15th and May 1st. This year, it's the beginning of July, and tomatoes are not climbing their way up to the top of the high tunnel. We are so far behind, it's not even funny. And part of me says, screw it, there's no point in planting. But in agriculture, we never give up. We just adapt and move on. I'm putting tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers in the ground. We're looking at a September harvest for all of these crops. And in some ways, this might be nice. Other local growers will be coming out of their peak production when we are just starting to harvest. Staggering harvest time is always good for the market and for our customers. I'm also leaving some space in the new high tunnel to plant winter crops. Because my summer harvest won't be as large, I'm going to really push the winter crops and see what else we can grow. Now it's time to get things in the ground in the high tunnel. It's also time to get the BCS and put it to work. Mike loves the flail mower on the BCS and I will admit it's pretty fun to see how big of weeds you can chop down with it. But when we started considering a BCS for the ranch, its main purpose was for the gardens. We have two attachments that will change how I garden. The rotary plow and the precision depth roller. Every time I use the BCS, I am amazed with how well it performs and how easy it is to use. Even though it looks extremely complicated, once you become familiar with the tractor, it's a breeze to run. The flail mower is hooked up to the tractor and we need to drop it off so that we can hook up the rotary plow. It's as simple as lifting a pin and backing away from the mower. Then it's into the shop and we can finally put the tires on the right way. The BCS handlebars rotate 180 degrees. We rotate according to which attachment we are using on the PTO. The flail mower goes in front of the tractor while the rotary plow and precision depth roller go on the back. The PTO and gear shift controls get popped out and pull a lever and the handlebars spin. Then we are able to back up and into the rotary plow attachment. The PTO is lined up and once everything is flush, the pin can be dropped back down and we're ready to head to the high tunnel. The rotary plow has four spiral blades that discharge the soil to the right side. And with multiple passes, a raised bed can be formed. There are many benefits to growing in raised beds, including warmer soil temps, increased soil aeration, decreased soil compaction, and hopefully an increase in our yield or harvest per square foot. Raised beds are a luxury that we've never had here on the ranch. We've always just grown straight in the ground, and that has worked just fine. But it's time to think of how we can increase our harvest yields in the future without increasing the amount of ground that we are farming. Next year, hopefully everything will be grown in raised beds, inside the high tunnels, and also in the outdoor gardens. With just two passes of the rotary plow, we have a roughly shaped raised bed. The rotary plow also creates a walkway. This is essential in a raised bed system. Soil compaction can stay in the walkways, leaving the soil nice and fluffy for the tomatoes to grow into. Once the beds are shaped, we're done with the rotary plow and it's back to the shop to grab the precision depth roller attachment. Rotary plow is dropped off and the PDR is hooked on. Both of these implements run on the back of the tractor, so we don't have to swivel the handlebars when switching between the rotary plow and the PDR. The PDR is a brand new accessory that allows us to control the depth at which we till and also gently compacts the top of our raised beds, which will be extremely beneficial when we are directly seeding into raised beds. It also makes transport of the tiller much easier. Just set the depth adjustment to high and we can move the tractor and tiller easily from the shop to the tunnel. The PDR is run over the top of the roughly shaped raised beds in the high tunnel. It makes our surface nice and flat and level. We've already worked in our soil amendments, but if necessary, compost could be added to the raised bed during this step.
There's one more big step that we need to accomplish in the high tunnel before we can put crops in the ground. We need water. We didn't run water to the new high tunnel, but we have hydrants in the old high tunnel and a simple garden hose gets water into the new high tunnel. Sometimes simple and cheap does exactly what you need it to do. Our friends Dave and Tammy are here visiting and luckily for us, they find it fun to help us with our work. We put them to work hooking up water and laying irrigation. A four zone timer is how we automate our watering in both high tunnels. We've used the system for a few years and it works great. It's easy to run, affordable, and available at Home Depot. We also add a pressure reducer as it's recommended with a drip tape system. This year we have switched to a new irrigation system. We are using a drip tape system from Dripworks. We've used drip tape in the past, but this system is much higher quality and will give us better results and more consistent watering throughout the length of the rows. Luckily, Dave and Tammy have installed systems like this before, so their knowledge and expertise was great to have. The system is really easy to hook up. Drip tape gets run the length of the beds, the end is plugged, and on the opposite end, we attach a coupler that will be plugged into the solid line that is run to the timer. The fittings are all really easy to attach to the lines, and you can lay the system out in any configuration that your garden might need. It's so easy to use that I wish that we had switched years ago. Once hooked up, we turn it on and can see the water coming out of the drip tape every 12 inches. This will adequately water all of our crops here in the high tunnel. Tomatoes can finally be put in the ground. Things might be super far behind schedule in the high tunnel, but things in the outside gardens are looking great. I'm here in what I call the little garden. It's full of pie pumpkins, a few decorative pumpkins, as well as cauliflower. Everything is growing really well, and with the recent heat wave we've seen, I can actually see the pumpkin plants growing daily. They are filled with tiny little flower buds, and everything will explode here in the next few days. Farmer's Market starts on Saturday, and we now return to the weekly grind of market season. It's a lot of work every week, and it's been a lot of work to get the crops ready to be harvested. I'm disappointed that we aren't the first ones to market with tomatoes like we were last year, but if there's one thing I've learned in agriculture is that no growing season is ever perfect, and you always have crop failure and delays. This year, it's the high tunnel crops that were hit the hardest. But we still have plenty of veggies to harvest and to take to market. And we will be showing you what that process looks like in the coming weeks. Make sure you subscribe so you can see more market farming here on the ranch, as well as explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Mike will have a new video for you on Sunday that's all about raking hay, the final step before baling. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more content in between videos here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and joining me in our Wyoming life.